What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. You don't want to miss them. For those who are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Dr. Antonio Webb, an orthopedic spine surgery fellow. So in this video today, I'm going to be talking about my path from high school to the point where I'm at today. What did I do to get to this point? What steps did I take? What barriers I faced? And some tips for you guys. So I am an orthopedic spine surgery fellow. That means I have completed four years of college, four years of medical school, five years of general orthopedic training, and I'm in my last year of training in my fellowship year. I actually graduated from high school, seems like a long time ago, in 2001. So that is 18 years ago. And over the last 18 years, I had a lot of ups and downs. I had a lot of barriers and jumps and obstacles to face. And along this whole path, my whole goal was to become a doctor. My high school was actually on a quarter system, which means that we took classes and we stayed in the classes a little bit longer throughout the day. I believe our classes were maybe 90 minutes long instead of the traditional 50 minutes. So this allowed me to complete my whole high school education in three and a half years. I was 17 at the time and my dad signed on the dotted line for me to go into the military midway between my senior year of high school. January 16th, 2001, while my remaining high school senior classmates were still in school and maybe doing some work study or taking additional classes, I went to boot camp. And after boot camp, I went to military school, to technical training or tech school. And this is where I learned to become a medic or a medical technician. It's called a 4NO in the military. And partway between this training, I was allowed to go back to my high school and walk with my high school class in my military uniform. So I joined the military at age 17 and I spent a total of eight years in the military. I spent six years on active duty and two years in the reserves. Once I got to my duty station, which was in San Antonio, Texas, my job was to work in a clinic. I was a medical technician and I had duties such as taking blood pressures, putting patients in rooms, doing vital signs, drawing blood. And every two years we would rotate through different portions of the hospital. So I worked in an ICU, I worked in the rheumatology clinic, I worked in the multi-specialty clinic, I worked on the internal medicine floor. But knowing that I wanted to become a doctor, I made it my goal to go to school as soon as I got to my duty station. In high school, I was actually accepted to a medical magnet program. It's called the Fair Park Medical Careers Magnet Program. And that program actually exposed me to medicine and got me off of the streets of Louisiana. There was a lot of things going on in Louisiana. It was really a bad environment at that time where I had several family members that went to prison, including my little brother, my little sister. And ever since I've been young, my mom has been on and off drug, in and out of jail my whole life. So that program exposed me to medicine and actually kept me off of the streets of Louisiana and into the books. So ever since that high school program, I made it a vow to myself and made a promise to myself that I would stick to the books and I would reach my goals of becoming a doctor. Once I got to my duty station in 2001, it took me about a year or so to complete all of my in-training or my orientation for the medical technician job that I had. But as soon as I finished that orientation, I signed up for classes on base and the instructors actually came to the military base to teach us. So there were several different colleges that came to the base, St. Philip's College, Northwest Vista, Park University, and this is where I actually started my education. My first class that I took was actually English 101, and I vividly remember being in my dorm room in the military and trying to study for a English final and thought to myself, like, man, this is hard, I can't do this. And I actually cried at one point because I thought that the path to become a doctor was so long and so challenging that I would never reach this point that I'm at today. With the military obligations and responsibilities and all the duties that I had, it actually took me seven years to complete my college degree. 
While in the military, if I worked in the ICU or worked on the floor and the internal medicine floor during the day, I would go to school at nighttime. So my shift ranged from 6.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. And I would go to school maybe from 8 p.m. to 10.30 or 11 p.m. And when I worked at nighttime, such as in the ICU, I would go to school during the daytime. So my shift maybe ran from 6.30 p.m. to 6.30 a.m. and I would drive across the city to the campus where school was held from 8 to maybe let's say 1 p.m. go home and sleep for a few hours, shower, maybe work out for two to three hours and go back to work at 6.30 p.m. So I repeated this process for a number of years and this is how I got my undergraduate degree. I was really lost during this time and I didn't know what to major in or what to study. I was under the impression that everyone had to have either a biology or a chemistry degree and then I came to figure out that that's actually not true. You can actually major in anything that you want to major in. You can major in music, you can major in aquatic therapy or nutrition or basket weaving and then just do the prereqs for medical school. So my major was actually biology. I actually got my associate's degree first at a community college called St. Philip's College. I went to Northwest Vista and took some classes there. So my college was a little bit disjointed and I went to several different schools because of my schedule in the military. In 2007, I actually completed my time on active duty for the military and I got off of active duty and went into the reserves. Before I completed my time on active duty, I actually had orders to Korea. So they were trying to send me to Korea for two years, but I was actually able to turn down that set of orders because I was getting out the military. And knowing that I wanted to get out the military and go to medical school, I turned down those orders, got out the military, and went into the reserves. So during this time, I think I had one semester left of completing my undergraduate degree. I transferred to the University of Texas at San Antonio, and that's when I completed my college degree and graduated in May of 2007. So May of 2007 to October 2019, 12 years ago, I got out the military in 2007, started my reserve duty and completed my reserve duty in 2009. And I was actually at UTSA taking a chemistry class or organic chemistry class. I think it was actually physics. And I was talking to one of my classmates who was actually leaving that day to go on a medical school interview. And I said, wait, you already applied to medical school? How are you? How did you already apply to medical school? And how did you already get interviews? And at that point, I knew nothing about the application process. I didn't have, you know, mentors or family members that were doctors already that I can ask or kind of guide me in the right direction. And that was the birth of my YouTube channel and my blog that I first started. So my vlogging actually started as a blog. When I finally got into medical school, I wanted something that my family members and other friends and people that were coming behind me could go to to reference. And I just talked about my day-to-day -day life and activities as a medical student. And this kind of transformed into a video vlog and that's where this channel kind of first started because I realized there's not a lot of information out there in terms of things that you need to know, what should you major in, what should your GPA be, how many schools should you apply to. That information was not just available when I was going through the years. So that's why I'm so passionate about making videos for you guys because I realize that having a mentor or someone who has been through it is actually the best resource for you. So I graduated college in 2007 and it was time to apply to medical school. And after talking to my friend that was in my class who had already applied to medical school, had already taken his MCAT, I knew nothing about the MCAT. I didn't actually take my first MCAT until I actually had graduated college. And the first time I took the MCAT, I actually made a 17. That was the old scoring system. I'm not sure what the equivalent score is to the new scoring system, but that was pretty low. My verbal score was actually the lowest. It was three. 
that's the lowest score that you can possibly get. So that's how lost I was during this time. With that MCAT score, I decided that it wasn't probably a good idea to apply to medical school. So I actually took the MCAT again for a second time. And I think my second time I improved my score by, let's say, I don't know, three points or so, but not that high. So after that second MCAT score had came out, I was devastated. I had studied for months on end. I had even hired a tutor, I took Kaplan, I took Princeton, and I just didn't get the score that I wanted. So I was actually working in the ICU as a LVN at that time, as a contractor for the military. Being in the military as a medical technician allowed me to challenge the California Board of Vocational Nursing, and I just essentially just took a test and got my LVN license. And that's what I did between the military and from starting medical school. So after that second MCAT score, I realized that my chances of getting into medical school with a score that low was pretty slim. This was a big decision for me and a really a big risk because I had purchased a house a couple years prior to that and I had other bills to pay such as my car note and credit card and things like that. But I knew that if I wanted to get into medical school, that I would have to increase my MCAT score by a lot. So the decision came up for me was that I would quit my job as a LVN for the military. I was a civilian contractor and study full time for the MCAT. And that's what I did. I actually quit my job. I didn't have any income coming in. It was actually just the savings that I had that I lived on for that particular time. And I studied for like six months and I took the MCAT and scored low again. And during this time, I think I had applied to a medical school. After my second MCAT, I was just like, what the hell? I might as well just apply and see what happens. I think I got one interview and it, that school just didn't pick me up. The second time that I applied to medical school, I didn't get any interviews. And it wasn't until the third time that I got, I think, two interviews and I contacted the schools and asked them, what can I do to increase my chances of getting into medical school? And I already knew the answer. I needed to raise my MCAT score. My GPA, I think, was like a 3.4 or 3.5, so not too high. It was actually affected by working full time in the military. And every school that I contacted told me that I needed to do a post -bac program. So this led me to looking at different programs and I found one at Georgetown University. This was a post -bac program that actually teaches you how to study, how to take tests, how to do well in medical school. And this program actually set me up for success in medical school. And the premise was that if you do well in this post -bac program, your chances of getting into the medical school were pretty high. So we took classes with the medical students, we took anatomy, we took physiology, we took biochemistry, and we were graded on the same scale as these medical students. And the day that I actually got the email stating that I was accepted to medical school was probably one of the happiest days of my life. And I was actually in front of the library, I think we had just finished studying and we got emails from the Georgetown University email system stating that congratulations, we are extending an offer to you for the class of 2014. One of the happiest days in my life. So I got into medical school and actually did quite well in medical school. I made honors in a lot of different classes, high pass, my evaluations in my clinical years were really good and it was time to apply to residency. And for me, going into medical school, I knew that I loved working with my hands and surgery was at the top of my list, but I didn't know what type of surgery. It wasn't until the end of my third year that I realized that orthopedic surgery was something that I absolutely loved. I love the fact that orthopedic surgery afforded me the opportunity to have immediate gratification. A patient comes in with a hip fracture or a broken wrist or a broken leg. I can take that patient to surgery and fix their fracture or fix their hip or fix their ACL and then get that patient back to their normal function. And I really enjoyed that about orthopedics and that's the reason why I went into orthopedics. My third year of residency training, it was time to apply to fellowship. And the fellowships in orthopedics, there's a number of them. You can go into hand surgery, foot and ankle, P 
pediatrics, oncology, spine surgery, and I chose spine surgery because I was always interested in the brain and spinal cord. I love the surgeries, it's very meticulous, it's very precise surgery, and I really enjoyed that about spine surgery. So that leads me to the fellowship year that I'm currently in. The fellowship year is one year long, we're about three months into this year, and um, it's been great. I'm learning a lot, I'm operating a lot, I'm doing a lot of surgery, I'm able to travel and do research and do a lot of other things. So I just wanted to share kind of my path from high school to college, to college, to medical school, medical school to residency, residency to fellowship, 2002 to 2019, 17 years. It took me a long time to get to this point, but I always tell people, don't look at it from a perspective like that. 17 years, that's a long time. Look at it from a day-to-day -day basis. Look at it from the aspect of what portion of your life are you currently in. If you're in college, just focus on college. Hey, I got four years of college that I need to get through. Medical school, four years of medical school, this is what I need to get through. You get to your residency. I got anywhere between three to seven years of residency. This is what I need to get through. And then fellowship. So break it up in chunks. Don't think of it as a long path because that can discourage a lot of people. But there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, I think it gets better with time. You get into medical school and the first two years kind of suck because you're sitting in the classroom and you, you're studying all the time, not really doing much other than the books. But you get into your third year and your fourth year and you're in the hospital or you're actually a student doctor. Then you get into residency and your intern year sucks because you're at the bottom of the totem pole. But as you go through the years, it actually gets better. You have more responsibilities, you have more autonomy, and it's a lot of fun because you're actually doing something that you enjoy doing. Then you get into fellowship and that's actually what most people would say is the best year of their life because you're not a full staff or attending yet. You still have responsibilities, but not as much as a full staff. So you're just in between your residency and also attending life. And that's a great year in this uh, path. So that's kind of my path uh, for you guys. I suggest that you take it day by day. If you want to become a doctor, never, 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 never give up. If it would have took me 10 years to get into medical school, I would apply every single year because that's how bad I wanted to become a doctor. So that is my advice for you guys. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. We'll see you next time.